Good morning, everybody. We'd like to welcome you today. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're so glad that you've joined us today. I'm Kim Case, and I'm pleased to co-host today with Peggy George. Lorna Constantini is not with us today, and she will be with us next week. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. I really appreciate that. Today we're going to be talking about EduBloggerCon, Mech Unplugged, and Mech Live. And our session is going to be kind of structured into two parts. And we have special guests with us today, Steve Hargadon and Wes Fryer. And they'll be with us in just a bit and structuring our conversation and leading those conversations about the unconference conference part of NEC. And each week at the same time, we gather to discuss the technology tools and issues of our broadcast. And our session is a one-hour session that is recorded. And the links to our full video, audio recording, and chat log are posted to our Classroom 2.0 live site at live.classroom20.com. The topic each week is posted on the live site so that you can be prepared with links, ideas, and tools that you'd like to share with the newbie question of the week that's pre-announced so that you can bring possible answers and solutions and an open mic time to share new discoveries or highlights from the previous week. And at the end of the show, if there's time, we hope that you'll share a highlight with us. So be thinking of something that you'd like to share. Before we begin, I'd like to review some of the features today that we'll be using in uh, this Illuminate session in case you're new to, the, to this forum. We'll be asking some polling questions, and you'll be using the menu at the top, uh, the green check for uh, yes and the red X for no, and you'll find those in the menu bar. You won't be clicking on the slide. You'll find those options up in the menu bar. Also, there will be the hand if you would like to speak. You'll click on the hand with the green, um, the green arrow. And next to the air of the hand is a smiley face. And if you'd like to uh, raise your hand to speak, you click on the green hand, on the hand with the green arrow. And the applause symbol is next to the emoticon. And there is an also a thumbs down symbol. And over across from the right is a blue door. And if you needed to step away, you would click on the blue door. And that would let us know that you're not available at that time and that you are stepping away. Below those symbols is the chat window. And if you'd like to send a message to the room, you would type your message and click the send button. And make sure that when you click send, that it says that this room is visible. And if you wanted to send a message to a specific person or to the moderator, you would make sure that you click the drop down arrow to make your selection. And moderators are able to see all private messages throughout the session, so keep that in mind when you're sending messages. But the private messages are not visible during uh, the full video recording. In the bottom right is the button to activate your microphone. You will click the mic button to begin speaking. And be sure to click the mic button when you're finished speaking to deactivate your microphone button. If you cannot see the chat uh, whiteboard or you'd like to resize your different windows, you'll be able to do, uh, resize those. Um, there are also some whiteboard tools that we'll be using that you can, um, that uh, will be activated. And I will explain those features as well. If you click on the view menus in the top menu row, you can resize your different menu, uh, layouts. The layouts are locked by default, so you would need to click on Layout Locked to unlock them. And then you can select different layouts. You can resize any of the different windows um, to meet your different your preferences. You can change them to fit your different screens. Um, and resize them individually. We also have Tammy, who is going to be um, doing our closed captioning features for us. So if you would like to uh, 
um, see the closed captioning or share this feature with others that we now have those features available, um, please do so and let others know about it. Um, when they come in, they can click on the CC in the menu bar and have those features in those windows come available and see the text that Tammy is typing for those features and people who are not able to hear the audio portion. So thank you very much, Tammy, for doing this for us and volunteering. We appreciate that. In a moment, we're going to be using the whiteboard tools, and we'll be using the specific tool called the laser pointer, which is the blue one with the red sunburst at the end. So if everybody would please click on that sunburst, the laser pointer, and then please click for your location on the world map. And you may need to drag that laser pointer, um, the little sunburst, over to the right a bit to indicate your location on the world map. We're seeing different locations, mainly throughout North America, but throughout also the rest of the world in the different continents. And we thank everybody for joining us today to talk about EduBloggerCon and Mech Live and Mech Unplugged. Um, it's great to see people in Canada, Alaska, looks like United Kingdom. And so now we're going to go ahead and go on to the poll questions. And again, we will be using the green check and the red X in the menu bar. And have you ever attended the next conference? If you have attended NET, the National Ed Educators Computer Conference, if you've ever attended a NET conference, please click the green check in the in the menu bar. And if you have not, please click the red X. I'll give just a few more seconds to vote, and then I will post the results. And it looks like forty five percent in the group have not attended net before, and about forty three percent have about half and half of, um, of the group so far have not or have attended pretty fair amount even amount represented. Okay, and the next question, have you ever attended an EduBloggerCon session as part of NEC? If you have, click the green check. And if you have not, click the red X. If you have ever attended an EduBloggerCon, please click the green check. And if you have not. Looks like there'll be an overwhelming uh, result this time. Give a few more seconds to ring in your votes. Okay, I'm going to post it. And looks like 73% have not attended an EduBloggerCon session. I've attended next, and I know that I've only attended the EduBloggerCon virtually. And according to this uh, poll result, 73% have not attended an EduBloggerCon, and only 16% have attended an EduBloggerCon session. So that's an overwhelming majority that have not. So this is going to be a great conversation today about structuring this year's EduBloggerCon and NetLive. And so um, I know that Steve has some uh, proposals on the way to structure this year's 
Edgy Blogger Con and Mech Live and Unplugged. And so um, before we get into that, Steve, if you could give some background as to what an unconference is and then get into um, first about um, Edgy Blogger Con and then we'll get into um, about the Neck Live and Neck Unplug, but first starting with Edgy Blogger Con and we'll focus on that and then about halfway through the um, I'll stop then and then we'll switch over to Neck. Uh, but I want to go ahead and introduce um, Steve and Wes and bring you all on and Steve if you'll take it I'll hand over um, the mic to you, and if you could start in, and um, I pass it to you for what is an unconference, and take it away, Stephen West. Hi. In fact, I'm glad that you uh, invited Wes in for this one. So, Wes, why don't you feel free to chime in? I'm putting my video on just because I think video is going to be a part of this year and uh, worth uh, at least using the technology to showcase it a little. So I think what I find fascinating about the term unconference is that I don't think it's actually an accurate term uh, because it's still a conference. Maybe, maybe uh, it's not a non-conference, but I think what people mean when they talk about unconference is that they're saying that a group of people are going to get together, but the agenda and structure of the day are not necessarily known when you get there. Now, we've never really had a full unconference at Edge of Blogger Con and ECC. Uh, this year at Q we did. We actually arrived without an agenda and built the agenda when we were there. I think what we're going to propose this year is that we do something very similar uh, at NECC for Edge of Blogger Con. But the phrase unconference or bar camp or open space meeting I think that these phrases have reference to a group gathering that does not have a pre-built agenda or has some form of fluidity during the actual event that, that gets uh, managed at the event. Okay, so Wes, how did I do? You did good. I was uh, on another tab, so having to get back to my mic. Uh, I think that's right. I think that uh, the idea is People are not only coming as as um, participants that are going to receive, but but uh, participants that are going to give, and so that's the idea that it's not uh, traditional. Um, if you're not on the formal program weeks in advance, you know you're just going to sit there and and listen. This is about participating. This is about bringing ideas. It's not that everyone has to participate, but certainly the value of the event is caused is directly related to the participation of of folks who come. And so the expectation and hope is that there are lots of folks who come, you know, not just uh, wanting to hear but wanting to participate as well. And in addition to that, um, the event needs to be one that's welcoming and, it, and should be one that's welcoming to a variety of folks, those who are feeling comfortable sharing and, and those also who are completely new and, you know, may in no way, shape or form be ready to take that leap into the presentation. So it's not a situation where everybody is going to be handed the you know, the podium or the mic and, and participate, but even if you're not formally presenting, it's all about conversations and discussions and learning that is really specific to different people's needs. So I think that's great a great addition. And I noticed that Kevin Jarrett put up some information and Joe did. Um, Kevin on the four principles, Joe on um, bar camp, uh, Kyle's asking about a food camp. I don't even know what a food camp is. And I'm not sure that you have to fully drill down on all of these in the same way that we have a lot of different definitions of Web 2.0, but we know it's participative. So what if we say that an unconference is a highly participative conference that can be run in a variety of different ways um, in which the participants help to build the agenda? How's that go? I think I think that works. Kevin's saying open space technology. <laughs> so yeah, right. and the good thing is too, we've got a lot of folks doing these kinds of things. Uh, I have not heard of the food camp style either. Uh, we're going to have Joe, I think, talk a little bit about bar camp. But you know, this is an idea which is being done uh, with great success in different places. We've seen great success in our community, uh, the the broad edu blog, you know, ed educational technology community. So I think our purpose here today is 
to talk about a little bit of where we've been, but even more so where, where we can go and where we want to go as a community to try and make this event as valuable for as many folks as it can be. Good. Is that good enough, Kim? Absolutely. Absolutely. So now if we can get into um, the topic of EduBloggerCon, and I put up um, just some reference of current memes uh, and some of the blogs that um, for future reference, not necessarily for reference, current reference. But um, if we could go ahead and start talking about maybe um, the structure, the idea, um, what prompted the the need, and how the the history of EduBloggerCon came about. Okay, so I'll take the lead on that. And again, I'm going to turn the video back on. Anybody else who wants to do video, please feel free to have up to six in video. Although the downside to video potentially is that somebody's on a slow bandwidth, uh, it's not great for them to receive the video. Okay, so um, the uh, I wanted to give a little bit of a, the history of EduBloggerCon. Um, you know, part of what I love about this community is the uh, the highly collaborative nature of it, and wanted to make sure that uh, there was some credit given where credit was due. So uh, the idea for EduBloggerCon actually was generated on a wiki that ISTE uh, had put up for ideas for NECC. And David Warlick put up a number of really good ideas, one of which was having a, an EduBloggerCon. I think he also put the idea for the Bloggers Cafe, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I I don't know what um, wh how we went from David Warlick's suggestion to to me organizing the first Edge Con, but I think it was because I was already doing the open source pavilion and had a room there, and so kind of took charge of um, creating the the environment for Edge Con to get organized, and that was in 2007 in Atlanta. Uh, and that was a smaller event. I think we had at most, maybe at the highest point, 75 to 100 people there. It was largely people who had been blogging and in the edu educational blogosphere, and who uh, many of whom had never met before. And it's hard to imagine that now, but it, at the time it was true. It just had people hadn't gotten together. It was a really, really big deal to actually be meeting people. And uh, the breakout sessions, people had. Uh, we had a wiki in advance, and people made proposals of sessions they wanted to hold in advance. So again, it wasn't a true unconference. And then other, if you wanted to attend a session that someone had proposed, you put your name under it. So we had some sense of the popularity of the sessions. And then we tried to build the schedule for the day based on not having highly popular events uh, competing with each other. A, a lot of the breakouts were in smaller rooms where people were sitting on the floor. It had very much of a collegial feel. I think it was very exciting. So uh, the next year was uh, San Antonio. And uh, we actually tried to hold a meeting like this, the one we're having today, but n nobody really attended. And uh, I probably felt too much of a burden to organize that event. Um, we did, we, I didn't want it to be uh, done on the wiki like it had been done the year before, but my idea was that we would actually go to the event the proposals would be on the wiki, and we would actually vote real time through our cell phones, and then again the voting just in order to make sure there wasn't conflict. Um, there were a couple of mistakes <laughs> in that event that we learned from. Um, you know, I think uh, number one was that that Pearson had asked if they could come and videotape, and what was supposed to be a very unobtrusive presence videotaping turned into a very obtrusive, intrusive presence. Um, and people felt like we were, we, there was too much structure. I was trying to impose too much structure. So uh, it was a great event still, but uh, and I think we probably had 200 to 250 people. Uh, now uh, we, we're anticipate. We have no idea how many will come to your blogger con this year. That, that there are 63 people here for the organizing meeting. I think says a lot. I'm hopeful that that means that even in a down economy, we'll have a lot of people there. Um, let's say we have 300 people. And that's probably a reasonable number to look at. We need to to sort of set the stage for that to be a fun event. And I think part of there are two things that I think are 
are going to be to our advantage this year. One of which is um, there was some feeling that we needed to have enough structure that people could justify to their departments or decision makers that they were going to go to the event. I don't think we have to worry about that as much now so that it doesn't, you know, we can allow some of the planning, most of the planning to take place at the event, which I think people will like, and we don't have to be as concerned that there has to be a formal structure so people can justify attending. The other is that we have a, a, a larger and, and more varied audience than we did in Atlanta. I think we have, and I'm not watching the chat, I apologize, so if you're saying something important um, that I need to, to see, somebody please flag me after I'm done. I think we have you know, the Classroom 2.0 audience. We have uh, people who don't consider themselves bloggers but consider themselves users of Web 2.0 technologies. We have people who are largely in social networking uh, or using wikis and, and, um, and other, you know, in VoiceThread. So, uh, you know, I, I think the event, uh, from my perspective, I'd like to propose that the event be very inclusive. Not only inclusive of people with different interests, but also inclusive of the beginner. And I'm very concerned that the beginner be able to come and have a, a welcoming experience. So we'll have this balance of, of we need a format in which the people who've been coming for the last few years or who really want sort of small drill down just with my friend sessions can go do that. But beginners also have a place to go where they will feel they have a good a good experience and a good time. So uh, what I've done, yeah, I'm going to make some proposals and you can tell me what you think. And then I will start looking at the chat. So the first proposal is the name, and I think it would be very hard to change from the name EduBloggerCon, even though I hear all the time from people that they feel like that says um, you can't come unless you're a blogger. But I think we keep the name EduBloggerCon, and what I'd like to consider and what I have been doing is just saying EduBloggerCon and Classroom 2.0 Meetup. And maybe we just work to, to continue to communicate to people this is not just, you don't have to be a blogger necessarily to attend. Um, how do people feel about that? Rushton says good. I'll, I'll chime in on that. I, I, think, um, I think it is good if it continues to be maintained as as broad and inclusive a group as possible. I mean, what, what's, what, obviously the Classroom 2.0 community is, is gigantic and growing and is inclusive. Um, I, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about Bar Camp here. I think that Keeping just Edge Blogger Con as as a name. I mean, what's going to continue to drive this event is social media. Is this participation of folks, um, you know, outside the formal traditional conference air arena? And while uh, one of the points I had written about yesterday and want to make, there are some venues that are going to probably remain small because of limited uh, size. You know, Educon is one that I don't know that we've mentioned in this call, but has has been I've been told just a very you know there's a lot of dynamics and, and things that, that cause that to be a very conversational and collegial you know type event. But size is one. I, I've heard that BLC can be similar. I don't think that we should try to, to limit the size of this event in terms of saying, all right, we're cutting it off at 150, you know, that's it. There's just, there's a ton of people coming to NEC and, and the opportunity here is for a lot of people to participate. So I think what we need to find is a way that large numbers of people can have a, a an unconference experience, uh, feel good about it, and uh, basically, as, as Joe Corbett mentioned yesterday, at the end of the day, I think what we want is if people aren't, aren't happy, then we just have ourselves to blame because because it's the community that comes together and participates. So, I mean, my vote would be to stay with EduBloggerCon. I don't, I don't know that we really have to change beyond that. And I think the format issues are really kind of the key, um, key thing to talk about. I think Joe wants to chime in. Joe, go ahead. Just hit your mic there. Yeah, I, you got it. Just hit your mic. Okay. Uh, I think a name change isn't necessary, but there's no reason why we can't have a, a subtitle that says EduBloggerCon and EdTechCamp. Because <clears throat> we kind of want to use the momentum behind uh, the bar camp spirit. Uh, that, that might be uh, you know, confusing to people who've been at EduBloggerCon in the first place, but I think uh, people are going to kind of, people are going to learn what bar camps are, what, why we've attached EduTechCamp to it, or some other, some other form of camp. Uh, the, the reason behind that is um, uh, there's going to be a lot of sharing on the web, and 
uh, using things like Twitter and blogs. People are going to make hashtag strategy blogger con that have to do with camps and other things like that. And I, th I think if we if we if we don't kind of uh, uh, you know nod our, our heads at the, the camp model and the camp name, we might miss uh, a sector of the community that we've never even seen before. And uh, I don't know I, if there's another I mean, there's another way to get them on board too. Uh, I'm, I'm all ears, but uh, I think maybe just some sort of uh, maybe a subtitle, but definitely keeping the name the same is good because I don't want to lose the core audience in the first place. Okay, so um, if the initial proposal was EduBloggerCon uh, and Classroom 2 Meetup, do we need I mean, Classroom 2.0 has 21,000 people? That may or may not be significant. Do we need Classroom 2.0? Or meet up in the title. Um, and let's address that before we address the, the camp. In fact, let's do some voting. If we keep, it, how many people would vote for keeping EduBloggerCon as the primary associating name, knowing that it has some negative connotations, but we would keep that as the primary name? Okay, so good, you're doing the green checks, and I'm going to go to polling, and I'll just quickly publish the statistics. Okay, so clearly we keep EduBloggerCon as the primary name. Now, how many would vote for having some association with Classroom 2.0 in, in the name as the subtitle? And green check for yes and red check for no. And I'll ask the same thing about camp in a minute. Because of tools, polling, publish the web. Okay, so uh, 33 say classroom 2.0, and 9 say no. Okay, so now let's do how many people would would have us use the phrase camp in the name? And green check for yes and red X for no. Okay, I'm going to publish this. Okay, so now I guess the question would be in the chat, is there something we've missed? Again, I don't want to spend too much time on the name today, but if we say EduBloggerCon and Classroom 2.0 Meetup, is there something that we're missing there that we really should be looking at? So go ahead and put in the chat any final issues before we move on from that. Good. It's not just for bloggers anymore. I love that. So we can we can just start saying that. That's a great idea, I think. Okay, because I think we face some bigger issues, I want to move on from the name. Uh, um, Joe, you can feel free to push back some more, but let's do that offline or in another meeting. But for now, I, I, I would like to move on. Um, and what, what I want to uh, also do is to, uh, in previous years, we had people sign up on the wiki and put their picture on the wiki as a part of sort of helping them get into the Web 2.0 world by using a wiki and also having a place where people could be visibly seen. That was before we had these Ning networks where you could just sort of click and add your name and picture to something. So right now, we have a Ning. In Classroom 2.0, we have a group called EduBloggerCon, which is for people attending EduBloggerCon. I think they're maybe 40 people in that group so far. My question is, do we uh, keep the EduBloggerCon associating group? It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to come. It doesn't mean if you're going to come that you have to be there. Do we keep that in the Classroom 2.0 group, or do we create some other way of indicating that you're coming? So green check says, just keep it the way it is. Red X says, no, we need some other better way of uh, tracking who's coming. And, and with, I think, the caveat that we don't necessarily need to know who's coming. Okay, and I'm going to publish that. Okay, so most didn't answer, but those who did, 22 said keep it, and uh, 6 said don't. So Joe, did you want to make a comment? Uh, um, on that note, um, 
I'm, I'm worried that people who are part of too many NINGs or don't care about NINGs and don't want to join up are going to be deterred uh, with doing preliminary participation because of that. Um, it, for Gov2O camp and other camps, we literally route a, a, a fresh blog for every, every time there is a camp. And to track who's coming, we use Eventbrite. And uh, the participants go to Eventbrite, and they, they register for free, and it's a, a running list of people. And uh, it's a very simple system. Uh, but I think having people jump through too many hoops, we're going to find, uh, we're going to miss out on a lot of people attending that we wish would have been there. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to push back a little bit on that, Joe, which is if we already have 20,000 people in Classroom 2.0 and we already have a group, how would creating another blog with an Eventbrite actually be simpler? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll feel I'll, that. Well, go ahead, Joe. Go yes, ahead. Uh, feel free to, to hop in and that's cool. Well, I I just I really feel strongly about this idea. I know I mean classroom people know is amazing with twenty thousand participants, and that number is just going to keep going up. I really feel like this event, and and Steve, I am totally at the top of the list of those thankful for your leadership and your continued leadership on this. Um, and I recognize your your connection here to classroom two point oh. I really think the Edge Blogger Con event, however, needs to be something that isn't tied to just a specific community and just a specific group. Um, because I just I really think this needs to be inclusive and not um, you know, not not just tied to a to a single uh, entity. Um, I'll let Joe jump in, and then I think I'd like to visit a little bit about the bar camp model um, because I think what we're what we're talking about here, in part, we're talking about titles, but we're also talking about structure and uh, kind of format, and we've definitely got some exciting format and and structure. Uh, not just suggestions, but models that are, that, are, that have been used in some other venues and, and have been really successful. But Joe, what do you want to say on that? Um, it, I, I think if we're if we're borrowing concepts from the bar camp model, then yes, that's fine to to keep it in a specific uh, population. Um, but if we if we are going to go with the bar camp model in in every way. We need to understand that uh, when you when you throw a bar camp, the information, the event itself is not owned by a, one community. Anyone can join it, and yes, anyone can join Classroom Two uh, Two Point Oh. But uh, I, I have a number of people in mind, uh, you know, not so specifically, but the many who aren't ed, aren't in the ed tech universe, but they're techies, and they have no reason to join Classroom Two Point Oh. They have nothing to do with education, but they're all tech. And to to get to to get those two universes together, we need, we need to find a common ground because to some people are not interested in ed tech; they're interested in tech, and some people are interested in just education and education policy, and not ed, and not tech. So that we, I think, if you want to go bar camp, we need we need to find something that, that's open that does not require a login and is literally just informational. So. Uh, um, two points quickly. One is, if the idea is not to necessarily have this be a sign up, but just a place where people are able to connect with each other later, meaning the goal is just to facilitate networking, it may or may not be a critical issue at this time. I see we've got the timer cutting us down. The other would be, Joe, this really is an education event. So if someone's not interested in education, I'm not sure we necessarily want to be opening the event outside of education just to text. Uh, and I would include librarians within education. So um, can I call a vote, knowing that this is not a critical issue? What is the vote on? OK. So the vote would be, <laughs> should we, now let's vote on if we spend any more time on this. No, I think the vote is, are we comfortable leaving the existing group within Classroom 2.0 for this year as the networking connectivity piece for JubloggerCon, or do we need uh, something independent of Classroom 2.0 that stands on its own? So if we can leave Classroom 2.0 for this year, which is not locking us in long term, green check. If you feel like we need that it's important this year that we have independence, red X. And in 10 seconds, I'm going to publish the results. 
Okay, so 33, keep it in classroom 2.07, take it off. I'm not saying it's not a good idea, Joe, and I actually like some independence west from classroom 2.0, but for this year I think we leave it where it is just as a, as a convenience and we can um, make that change uh, next year. Okay, so uh, let's move quickly to bar camp, the bar camp idea. And let's, uh, I want to be careful not to associate necessarily bar camp as the full driving force, but Joe, I'd like you to give a 90 second description of how bar camps that you've run have been run. And ma let's make that a proposal as to how we would run EduBloggerCon, because I really like it. So uh, go ahead and take the mic, Joe. Joe, we are not hearing you, so something may be going on with you. Looks like, like Joe like dropped, dropped off. Just dropped off. Yeah. Wes, would, yeah. You, would you do? I'll, Wes, would I'll, you do that description? Yeah. Sure, I'll pick it up. Um, I'll drop a link into the uh, into the chat of uh, basically um, the bar camp model. This is a model which is developed uh, to to do on conferences, and it involves a amplification in the blogosphere of an event and the different topics which are going to be covered. Um, a lot of these events are niche events, so they'll focus on medical, they'll focus on going green, uh, they'll focus on government uh, 2.0, transparency issues, they'll focus on education. Uh, and there are different bar camps that are ongoing all over the world um, now. The thing that I think is so relevant to us is the format that they're using to get all, everything organized because as we've talked about, you come to the event not knowing what the agenda is going to be. So if you go to the rules of the bar camp, everyone, in, in whether you're talking 200 people or 500 people, introduce themselves uh, in three words and say if they want to have a session. Organizers are at the front of the room writing this down, putting stuff down on cards, uh, and after all the introductions are done, you've got about a 20 minute uh, kind of break and then a grid is created uh, for people to go to breakout rooms, it gets posted online, and then the event happens. You've got kind of like high school passing periods, um, and then you've got a good block of an hour and a half, two hours for lunch, and the whole idea is, you know, people come with, with ideas and then this is a mechanism and venue whereby people can, can share those ideas and present. So I don't know if that was 90 seconds, but that's my shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great job. And, and I, I led group tours for five years, so I always think in terms of flow of an experience. And I really like the idea that uh, we, people stand up, they introduce themselves. If they want to facilitate a session or be on a panel, they mention it, then that's being taken down. And then we have like a half hour social break. And I think we really missed that this last year in San Antonio. People really wanted to socialize, and we got right into business. So we do the introductions. We have this good socializing period where we actually take those sessions and we put them up on a big grid or we put them in a wiki. And these are suggested places you can go for facilitated discussions, and then people can go. So I know that because of time this morning, we can't drill down much further than that. But can we get a general sense of how people would respond to having the bar camp process uh, be the driver for NECC's EduBloggerCon this year? And green check means yes, red X means no, I need more time to think about it, or I'm not in agreement. Right, and, Al and Alice, we, we know we need some, so there actually would be a little bit of a committee um, who would uh, work on during that half hour on taking the sessions and uh, putting them into the schedule. And Joe, you're back. But you missed Wes's description of bar camp, so we're, we're actually taking a vote right now. And uh, I'm going to publish the statistics. So 30 people say they like the idea of a bar camp-like environment, which basically says you arrive at the conference, the sessions get determined at the time. You can pick to go whichever ones you want, and you have a lot of freedom and flexibility. Peggy asks, you know, how, how it would be hard for newbies to figure out how to participate. And so maybe the great takeaway from that, Peggy, is that we really work hard at having, and maybe even during that initial socializing half hour, we have a session for, for new people to get together that's a little bit more um, oriented to having them feel socially embraced. And I'd say I'd, 
we may we can offer that, and that's the kind of thing traditional conferences will do. Hey, first timers. But uh, hearing what Joe said about bar camps, I mean, it really it really is set up to embrace newbies. And one of the keys that was a criticism last year was, wait a minute, I wanted to have this conversation and I couldn't do it. That's a key uh, element. Is that you know the the people will be combined in panels when the topics are similar, but essentially all the topics that people want to present about get presented. And so that that's a key element um, which will differentiate from from last year. I think will be the inclusiveness of the, the of the presentation topics. Um, and so the venue, of course, will have to lend itself to that as well. Yeah, I, I do worry a little bit about the person who doesn't know anybody who's taken this big leap of getting there early and who walks into an event without a friend and kind of <coughs> feels like they're they don't really quite know where to fit in and engage. So I love the idea of having some kind of a first timer welcome. You know, that during that half hour, if you're here for the first time, we're gonna bring you in a room or we're gonna say hi and have you introduce yourself and um to really bring you in, uh, embrace you and so to speak. Okay, yeah, so and I think that's part of it too. If 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 that's a session we want to have, we have it, you know, because it's not. This isn't a, a deal where we're going to really have to close off sessions. So yeah, that's great. If that's a desire, then it happens. Well, I'm going to have to okay. interject um, because <laughs> this is this is a great conversation, and we can always stay afterwards. Um, but we need to get on to our next segment, which is um, I know you have some more proposals about structuring and combining about the next unplugged and the next live uh, components of the next conference. So um, let's go ahead and start discussing and talking about those portions of next. Great. Okay, thanks for doing that, Kim. Uh, uh, Stephanie's asking, you know, if she'd be willing to mentor people. One idea we had last year that we never, that we actually, um, we had T-shirts uh, for people who were willing to be mentors, and it never really took, but the idea of being somehow identified yourself as a mentor willing to mentor newbies. Or okay, next so, ambassador. Right, Joe, you're raising your hand. Yeah, uh, I just want to say I understand everyone's uh, hungry to learn more about bar camps, and to, to close the conversation, I'll be happy to put a bunch of information together to make it, uh, you know, a little more clearer for everybody, and I'll, I'll do that in the coming days. Hey, Joe, thanks for taking time uh, on a very important personal day for you. Hope everything goes well. And you, I'm sorry that you, somehow it seems like your connection dropped off right at the very moment we were going to have you talk. Uh, it must have well, been the good news the conversation is not over, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Joe, really appreciate your help, and, and uh, we'll look forward to, to having you um, help us figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to move on to NECC Unplugged and NECC Live. NECC Unplugged and Live both started last year. NECC Unplugged was this idea to have a place where anybody could sign up to give a, a presentation at NEC. You didn't have to have gotten accepted or approved. It could be a topic that wasn't uh, current when applications were actually being submitted for NEC. And uh, I think it's a really great idea. Uh, it, you know, it didn't work out as well as we might have hoped because it was held in the Bloggers Cafe, which meant that there was a little bit of a conflict between the Bloggers Cafe and NECC Unplugged. But the commitment we have from NECC this year is we actually should have our own separate space, maybe even a room. What's really fun about this is that with my new relationship with Illuminate and my unlimited access to those resources, we want to have NECC Unplugged still as a place where you sign up, can give sessions, and we want to stream the whole thing so that anybody who wants to can actually spend the three days watching those sessions remotely. Um, which raises some other issues, but um, if, if we do any CC Unplugged as a streamed event, then the kind of natural conclusion would be to take our NECC Live Wiki, which last year had three people who just in a grid made sure that they made notations of anybody who was doing you streaming or live blogging so that you could know where to go. If you were an, 9 to 10 o'clock on Tuesday, you could see what sort of user-generated content was being put out from NEC last year. That was its own separate wiki. And I think what I want to propose is that NECC Unplugged actually kind of subsume NECC Live and become the single site where you've got the, um, the, the user-generated presentations 
that are being streamed live in Illuminate. You've got any other Ustream or live blogging or anything else that's going on. Now get this, that you then actually have a column where if you're remote to NECC and you want to give a presentation in Illuminate during NECC Unplug, you can actually schedule yourself in for that too with a link. Um, and then any other information that relates to viewing NECC remotely. Okay, so <laughs> is, is that too much or does that actually make sense? So you have NECC Unplug sessions that are taking place with people live at NECC that's being streamed that you can watch remotely. And this is these are sessions where people can sign up for 15, 30 minutes uh, and, and give a presentation they've always wanted to give but maybe didn't get accepted to do. You have all your back channel and uh, other presentation uh, links, streaming links in a column so that during that 9 to 10 o'clock time frame you can also see that Wes Fryer is using Ustream to live stream a session. And then you actually have a column where if you want to, if you're not at any CC but you want to give a remote presentation from 9 to 10 o'clock, you can also do that in, a, in, a, in, an, in a, um, an Illuminate room um, so that we've got the one site that has all of this opportunity for remote participation. Okay, now I'm going to look at the chat and see if I really have jumped off the into the deep end. So, and yes, I'll uh, give voice to one we'll of those record. questions. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's the, re the recording possibility and would be there. Steve, did you just say if you weren't at NEC, you could give a remote session via yes. Illuminate? Yeah, I want to. I want to clarify that. We would not broadcast that session into NEC. I think that would be too complicated. But, right. But I've been. I, but we will actually have an Illuminate room available that you can put on the schedule if you want to give a presentation to other people who are not at NEC and, and would be interested in hearing from you. So and something maybe else we need to complication. We, we need to mention NECC Remote because that is a video conference event which is happening again this year, which is a paid event. And there are sessions that I understand, like last year, are going to be in that room. And um, so clarifying that kind of thing, and that's something which Need, certainly, we just need to try and communicate really well all these opportunities that are available. That is a different event than what we're talking about here with NECC Live. The NEC3 Remote is a ISTE controlled, net controlled um, event versus this more organic and, and dynamically, how, how, what are the words you'll put to, <laughs> to ex explain NECC Live, uh, Steve, different from it just Good, thank be, you. The, the session being set up as, or the agenda okay. being established thank as we go. Right. Alex, so, so Twitter, Twitter, so Twitter hashtags would be listed here. Everything that would make it possible for remote viewers to have an experience at NECC would be on this one page. Okay, Alex, did you want to ask a question? Um, I guess my question is because there. There were a lot of um, questions at the start last year about um, remote streaming from the actual NEC events, <laughs> and um, and I noticed that this year the uh, there were a lot of issues about people getting into the bring your own laptop sessions. There wasn't enough space, and this year they're having a pre-sign up to go over and deal with that. And if anybody is in contact with NEC, what how are they about, uh, you know, provided that the session presenter is interested in doing this, going over and doing a very robust live blog or even an Illuminate session of some of those BYOL sessions? Because obviously they're exceedingly popular. They can't provide enough space for it, and they're already anticipating that this year. Steve or Wes, you want to field that? I'm not sure I understood. Sorry. Uh, was there a question? I was in the <laughs> <laughs> it fun when Alice, we the back channel. We love you. We weren't purposely ignoring you, I promise. Spring, I'm I'm dealing with sixth graders. I'm used to this. <laughs> the <headphones laughs> are in as we think. So, um, you you Steve, hope you don't get all the I'm trying to give y'all wait time. 
you know. I know you were being good. Okay, we're listening <laughs> now. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, and I'll make it. I'll make it really brief. Um, what I'm concerned about is uh, last year I did extensive live blogging from NEC itself, and one of the issues was not enough space, and in particular the bring your own laptop sessions were. But the the demand exceeded the supply, and they seem to be anticipating it this year. They're asking for people to go over and pre-sign up on April 15th, and that there will only be a limited number of seats over at those. Uh, is Nick anticipating either doing some streaming out of those themselves? Um, it you know are they? And I know that they're also trying to figure out what their policy is as far as um, live blogging and bloggers being pressed. Does anybody have any contact with Nick um, over about issues like that? Uh, because it sure. strikes me that live blogging would be a way, you know, either even if we can't do an illuminate, there's a lot I could do with cover it live to go over and get those BYOL sessions out. Absolutely, this is where I'll fill that. And let me say, you know, my connection with ISTE at this point is I've they just contracted with me to blog on ISTE Connect. So through that connection, that's where Joe Corbett comes in because he's you know connected with with iStrategy Labs that's contracted with ISTE. There are some good channels here, and Steve's got channels as well. My understanding is that uh, NEC is going to they have this uh, NEC remote which is not associated with anything we've talked about here today. It's a separate video conference event. They are going to podcast and have uh, sessions recorded asynchronously, although Apple is not doing that this year. Uh, interestingly, I do not know the organization that's being contracted to do that. I have been visiting with Joe and others uh, basically to say what kind, how how could we facilitate this kind of sharing because, you know, I'm going to be there doing it. Alice is going to do it. There's a lot of people who are going to do it. It would be wonderful, I think, uh, not saying, hey, let's essentially, you know, have this controlled and managed, but say, how do we amplify those people who are live blogging, those people who are live streaming? And so the NEC uh, live site can be a place to amplify that. Potentially, ISTE Connects can, but we need to, to get those things clarified. In terms of the permission side, my understanding is that it is the responsibility of whoever is going to uh, record or live webcast to get the permission of the presenter. It's probably a good idea to do that if you're live blogging as well. And uh, that was a discussion we had on the ISTE community. So I would say we'll stay tuned for more uh, discussion and dialogue. My desire would be to find ways to amplify those efforts and also to help support people who want to do that. Because certainly bandwidth is an issue, but we just don't want anybody to, to get in trouble and people to get upset because they got webcast right. or they got you know live blogged and they didn't want right. that to happen. Well, live blog, I mean, you know, I've got to, people have to be able to go over and type of it. I can see if they don't want it like recorded um, stroke, for, uh, if they don't want, you know, it a word for word thing. But, I mean, Angela Myers is in here and she's asking me, oh, are you going to live blog like you did from ASCD? ASCD had an intentional plan for this. They were encouraging live blogging over at it. They went over and they featured the cover at lives that, um, Angela from my blog um, in practice was doing from there, and so it, we and she ended up having like up to a hundred people going over and watching her live blog at a time. I think we could probably do larger over with a neck audience over on that, and it would it would solve some of the the frustration problems that people have with some of these main sessions. Anyway, I'm sorry I've kind of hijacked this. I've got my two cents in. I'll go over it. I'll shut up now. Okay, so I wrote down okay. four things in the chat, and I think what we can do is we can just vote on which ones we, we want to have take place. So number one is physical presentations where you sign up to give the presentation. It's taking place at NEC, but NEC's not really in control of what gets presented or who's presenting. So if you've always wanted to present at NEC and we're never able to, or there's a new topic, you can do that. So Green Check says, yes, we keep any CCN plug going like we had it last year, but it's an owned space, not in the Bloggers Cafe. There should be a resounding yes, but let's see how people respond. Okay, and I'm not even going to publish because we don't have anybody saying no. And number two would be bringing what had been on a wiki, the NECC Live wiki last year, which was any other kind of live streaming or community generated uh, things coming out of NECC. We had a wiki where that could be located. 
do we take the NECC Live Wiki and bring it into NECC Unplugged so that both, if you're a remote viewer, you can both see the live streamed events from NECC Unplugged, but you can also see other things that people are streaming out from NECC. Green check says yes, red X says no. Again, I won't publish because I don't see anybody saying no. Okay, so number three is a, probably a little more controversial and, and maybe depends on somebody actually being willing to, to, to oversee this, would be will remote participants want to be able to make presentations to each other during those three days if they're already all sort of congregating around an ECC? And this is really, someone's requested this for me, so if we say no, it's too complicated, I'm not going to feel badly, but I do know that some remote participants want to be able to actually present. So can remote participants present? It wouldn't get streamed into NECC, but it would be to other remote participants. And I'm not going to vote because I want to see what the community says. And that looks about even to me. Oops, I hit the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Have everybody vote uh -oh. again. Okay, we got to vote again. I cleared it. Ask everybody to vote. I cleared it instead of voting. Okay, so the red green check means we want to make a way for remote participants to present. Red X means this is too complicated. It's more than we really should take on. So uh, we don't need to have remote participants presenting. Okay, so yes for remote participation. So, but not a complete overwhelming vote, but but a yes vote. So I think what I would say is um, I'm going to look for somebody to step up to volunteer to organize that. And if we get a strong organizer, we can include it in any CC Unplugged. I certainly have the resources from Illuminate to do it. Without a strong organizer, I wouldn't be able to do it, so we wouldn't do it. Okay, then idea number four is would people want to gather in their local areas, either during EduBloggerCon or during the three days of NECC, would they want a place where they could actually list that they're having a physical gathering that's not at NECC? And I'll tell you, I think this idea is really fun. It may be premature, but do we give it a try? Green check says yes. Red X says no. I don't see a single red X. So I guess in that case also, I think we would look for somebody to step up and say, I'm kind of interested in overseeing this part of the wiki which would be um, just a list of cities where people could put in their local ways of connecting with each other if they wanted to physically get together and watch the stream from um, NCC Unplugged and or do little things with each other. And that's a surprisingly positive vote here. I didn't expect that. Bob made the suggestion in the, in the chat, so credit where credit is due. So that's really fun. So I, I take that as an overwhelming yes. Okay, Wes, uh, we're, we're down to the hour. Did we accomplish some good things? Is there anything critical that we missed? Well, I, I think this idea of just communicating better what's, what the event is and having the dialogue about how things can be organized. I mean, the good news is we've got good options for this. And uh, I, I, I did have a question that I posted. Do we have, I guess, do we sign up on the wiki if we want to help organize EduBloggerCon? Or what, uh, what's the process there, Steve, for people? You, you mentioned an organizer possibly for uh, NEC Live and, and remote presentations. How, how should people sign up if they can actually help in person uh, at NEC this year with the events? So with uh, both EduBloggerCon and NECC Unplugged, Right, or with where one, would be a good place one or the other. Where yeah, would be a good place to, to do that? What, the what if we like set up to do that? Well, what, we could use the NECC Unplugged Wiki, and I could just add that as a as a place there to indicate your interest in helping to organize. The other thing we could do is we could schedule another follow up meeting like this that wasn't to the full classroom to our live audience, but was for organizers. And people uh -huh. who wanted to could we could gather well, together. And, and I think you might want to also think about doing two different things. I mean, you, on Edu, on EduBloggerCon, if we don't already have it, I, I think we could have a, a a page to sign up to organize or to you know help organize. Um, and it sounds like two subcommittees. You know, a subcommittee for EduBloggerCon, a subcommittee for Classroom uh, or for uh, for Neck Live. Is that are you seeing it that way, or you think those groups are going to be the same? No, I yeah I agree. So two larger divisions. EduBloggerCon and NECC Unplugged, 
Uh, and even with an NCC, NECC unplugged, it sounds like we'll have some different roles. So let me make a proposal. Wes, what if you kind of drive the organizational committee for EduBloggerCon, and I'll drive the organizational committee for NECC Unplugged. We can still both be working both on each, but uh, you and I can um, can kind of uh, d divide that task out. Does that sound like a reasonable plan? I just say let's use uh, facilitate instead of drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. No, no, that sounds that's fine. I'm happy to serve in that role, and I, you know, I just think that this idea again of at the end of the day with EduBloggerCon and, and with Tech Live too. I mean, if if people are upset, then you know, hopefully we'll be the ones to be upset about because you know there's going to be a lot of folks that are involved in trying to help organize this and make it even better. So. So we do have a raised hand. Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, why don't we? There, there needs to be some ability to actually communicate where this organizing is going to take place. So, uh, for right now, anything that we do like this, where we're trying to we're trying to gather the people together who are interested, I will post both both on the Edge Blogger Con wiki and the NECC on Blog wiki. And Wes, you and I can both blog those links as they come up. Sounds good. Kristen, do you have a question? Do you want to? You've got a hand raised. She's Sorry, got a, Kristen. Oh, that's okay. Kristen, you have the mic if you'd like to ask a question. While we're um, waiting for Kristen to um, activate her mic, I'd like to extend this time. Um, we can go ahead and wrap up. And um, we'd like to invite everybody to extend the time and stay over. I know that there are still conversations that are still going on, and if you'd like to uh, stay past the time, we're, we invite you to extend your time. If you need to leave, that's fine. You're welcome to, you know, I know that your time commitment and you have things that you need to do, but if you'd like to stay on, you're welcome to stay on. Kristen, go ahead. Hey, guys, start. Sorry, I seem to have dropped off for a minute, and I'm, I was letting the audio catch up. Um, I set once an idea about Cover It Live in terms of um, having maybe somebody organize um, single, because oftentimes what happens is three or four of them get uh, set up at a time in the session. Um, so maybe even a way that we could, through um, the um, NEC Unplugged, organize one specific place where these uh, live blogs can be archived. Um, and that might be something that can um, go on to next year for uh, for NEC itself um, as a way to archive all of those live blogs in, in one single place instead of having multiple things all over. I think that sounds great, and I'll look for that. Uh, was that as an email? Uh, you can just text in. So we'll we'll look for I'll look for that, and that's a good idea. And that's exactly the kind of thing we want to explore. So thanks. Thanks, Kristen. We appreciate that. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. And if you'd like to stay, that's great. Um, if you need to leave, that's fine. And we'll continue the conversation um, as soon as I wrap up. Uh, next week, April 18th, we're going to continue um, our conversation with our topic of digital storytelling. And our newbie question is going to be, what is digital storytelling and how can I use it in my classroom? And our special guest is going to be Rushton uh, Hurley, and he's with us today. And so we're so glad to see you, Rushton. And we're looking forward to those great ideas with Rushton. And then the following week is going to be uh, copyright with Kristen, and we're so glad to have her with us again today. And I, uh, we're going to... I'm going to post the link to our survey for Illuminate, and let me put that in here as well. And if you could please fill that out, and you can click on that survey link. And if you could uh, give feedback to Illuminate, we'd greatly appreciate that. And you can click on that in the chat or in the, the slide. And uh, through the futureofeducation.com site that was created uh, by Steve Hargadon, uh, that's a place for and another meme that he has created to share voices and ideas um, through a participation with uh, Knowledge Works Foundation and PBS through the forum Illuminate. There are live interviews and sessions, and coming up next week is 
and online learning in the future with Susan Patrick and the affiliation with NACOL on April 15th, when this coming Wednesday at 8 p.m. and 5 p.m. Pacific um, in Illuminate. So be uh, stay tuned and watch for a link coming through the Future of Education and the Classroom 2.0 site um, for a link to that session. And we'd like to give a special thanks to Steve Hargadon and Wes Fryer, our very special guests today, and the founder of Classroom 2.0 and the Future of Education site. And thank you so much to everybody who came today and who participated today. And a very special thanks to Illuminate for providing this forum. And we're going to go ahead and continue the conversation. And if you would like to um, participate and ask a question, uh, please click on the, the hand with the green arrow, and we will give you the microphone. Or put your question um, and type your question in the chat, and we will address it. Um, you can participate via the chat or the microphone. And let's see. Caroline, you have the microphone. And if you'd like to ask your question, you may do so. Alice, did you want to ask a question? It looks like Alice may be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. If anybody else would like to ask a question, um, please do so. Okay, no problem. If you'd like to uh, use your microphone to ask a question, feel free to put the hand with the green arrow. We'll be happy to give you the microphone. And if you would like to, um, or if you don't have a microphone access, you're welcome to put your uh, question in the chat. And we'd also like to give a special thanks to Tammy for um, doing the uh, closed captioning features today for our session for those who are hearing impaired. And Joe, uh, would you like to uh, make a comment? Yes, uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for today. I've actually learned quite a bit about EdgeBloggerCon and uh, Neck Unplugged. Um, I'd, uh, I have to run, and I just want to let you know that I'm I work more than is uh, you know humanly possible. So you can reach me on Twitter or email, and I can help you with anything related to Neck or EdgeBloggerCon. So please reach out to me, and I will absolutely get back to you. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate that. Um, would anybody else care to? Um, Joe, somebody asked for your Twitter name, Joe. And uh, Steve, uh, Peggy asked about creating a new badge this year. So last year there were a couple of badges. Uh, one was who, who was it that had that did their own badge that had the fist? Um, Anyway, so um, I I did badges for Classroom 2.0 and for support blogging, but I haven't done any since then. Do we have any ideas about badges? Yeah, Revolution Learning Badge. I've got that somewhere. Take care, Rushton. See you next week, Rushton. I'm going to have to put that in the to think about list, Peggy. Cliff, did you want to make a comment? If there's a lull in the conversation, yes, but I didn't. Uh, I don't want to interject if. if 
that thought wasn't complete. Um, Go right ahead. Go right ahead. I, had, I had thrown into the discussion uh, way back towards the end of uh, the discussion about uh, mentors and stuff. Maybe we uh, set up a Friday night tweet up dinner or a Saturday morning tweet up breakfast and with the idea of it being social because I know last year I you know it was my first EBC and showing up is a bit intimidating because so many people know each other or more importantly recognize each other and so maybe if we had a social event right before uh, AG Blogger Con started that might help people feel a bit more comfortable and get plugged in um, and it might facilitate that same kind of process. That's a great idea, Steve. Is that something that you could that would be available through the names? Yeah, I, th I love that idea. Um, I, uh, I'd love to play with it a little. I mean, one thing we could do is we could have the tweet at breakfast. I'm all, I also even wonder if people would feel nervous about coming to that. But you know, maybe we could even have uh, in the schedule. If say we're starting at nine, we could have an eight thirty newbie gathering. You know, if this is your first time, you know, come and we'll spend a half hour just making sure you feel comfortable. You know, mm -hmm. that first half hour before it starts. Okay, so we got Wes, Peggy, me, Tim. I'm going to turn the recording off if that's okay. Sure. Is Craig still here? Okay, so Craig, you're still here. So I'm I'm turning the recording off. <laughs>